Hey, a friend, Chris here from WideLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day 33 in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel and website, where I'll help you go from being a beginner in Logic Pro to become an expert, fully comfortable and capable to get right down to making awesome music in this amazing application. Today, let's dig into track stacks, which are these amazing organizational tools that allow you to combine multiple tracks together as if they were one track. Whether you want to be able to adjust the relative levels of multiple tracks from a single fader, or be able to process a subgroup of tracks as if they were one from a single plug-in chain. You can even record and perform with a multi-layered instrument made up from multiple software instruments that have been stacked together, and so much more. To get started with track stacks, we first need to select which tracks we want to populate our track stack with. Depending on where your tracks are in the tracks area, we could either select the track header of the first track that we want to include, and if all the tracks that you want to include in your track stack are directly above and below each other, just bring your mouse down to the last track header of all the tracks that you want to include, hold shift, and then click. Or if you need to select tracks that are not directly above and below one another, hold command on your Mac's keyboard and select the track header of every track that you want to include. Holding command while clicking on an already selected track header will deselect that track. And from here, we can go right up to track in the top menu bar. Let's then go down to create track stack and click. From here, we have a pop-up dialog that offers us two different types of track stacks that we can combine these multiple tracks into. The first is a folder stack. And as noted in the details section here, a folder stack is a basic track stack that allows you to mute, solo, and control the volume from the main track. Our second option is that of a summing stack. A summing stack is a multi-purpose track stack that mixes its subtracks together and can be saved as a patch. A summing stack can also record in playback MIDI or a remote control recording on audio-only subtracks. Let's start out by selecting the folder stack option and clicking create. And just like that, the four separate tracks that we selected have been combined together into a single track lane that's been named sub one. But those four tracks are still in our project and we can reveal them at any time just by clicking on this disclosure triangle in the track header of our track stack. All right, so there's the overhead track with its audio region, the kick track, the snare bottom track, as well as the bass track. And if we open the mixer by using key command X, we can do the exact same thing in the mixer. If you don't need to see the individual channel strips for the subtracks in the mixer, we can once again click on that triangle to collapse the track stack so we only see the main track. And this is reflected in both the mixer as well as the tracks area anytime we expand or collapse our track stack. And in the track stack region, you can see these four lines that each represent the four tracks within the track stack. With the track stack open, you can easily see which tracks are part of the stack based on the left-hand side boundary along the track headers. And regardless if you're working with a folder stack or a summing stack, you can easily reorganize the tracks within a track stack just by clicking, holding, and dragging each track header. You can move a track into a track stack, again, just by clicking, holding, and dragging that track header into the track stack. And we can do this for multiple tracks, once again, by holding command and clicking on the individual track headers and then dragging those tracks in. You can have any combination of tracks inside of a track stack, whether it be software instrument, audio, MIDI, drummer, or anything else. And you can remove a track at any time from a track stack just by clicking holding and dragging that track outside of the boundaries of the track stack. So I'll do the same for the synth as well as the bass and drag them right out. All right, to start out, let's just mute all the other tracks and focus in on the drum tracks that make up our folder stack that's named sub one. And let's go ahead and open the mixer. Besides being a handy collapsible and expandable folder that you can use for organizational purposes, Folder stacks let you combine multiple tracks and control them as a unit without changing the audio routing of the individual subtracks. The main track for a folder stack is called the Stack Master, and that's because it's essentially a master fader for the group. For example, if I press play and then we start to listen to these drums, Okay, so as I make adjustments to the folder stack fader, we see on the level meters themselves for the individual subtracks that the levels are being adjusted for all the tracks within the stack. Once again, if we take a look and a listen, it 
It's worth noting if we add a compressor, maybe to the kick track, and let's just beat it up with a Studio FET, and I'll make it pretty obvious what's going on here. If we take a look and a listen on the meters here, If I now make an adjustment to the fader, the kick level within the compressor here will not change. So this fader action of the folder stack occurs after our audio effect processing. However, depending on how you set up your sends within a folder stack, if we go to bus one for the snare track here, Let's add a reverb. If we take a listen and a look, we'll just look at the level meters here. Because send one for the snare is set to post pan, the level adjustments that we're making with the folder stack fader are having a direct impact on the level of the snare being sent to the reverb. So if we set send one to pre-fader and take a listen and a look. It has no impact. So let's just power down send one for now. Something worth keeping in mind as you work with folder stacks. We can also mute and solo the group as a single unit. If we bring in some of these keys and take a listen. But of course, we can continue to adjust the individual fader levels, the panning, audio effects, send levels and effects for our individual subtracks as we always could. For example, Folder stack simply acts as a quick and easy remote control for fader adjustments, mute, and solo for our subtracks. From here, we can remove all these tracks from the folder stack, either by holding shift and clicking on the first track and the last track and moving these tracks outside of our folder stack. But now we're left with this orphan folder stack that we have to then select and press delete on our Max keyboard to get rid of. Or if we undo using Command and Z, we could go up to track in the top menu bar, and then go down to flatten stack and click. We've now removed this folder stack from the project. Let's now explore other option for track stacks, which are called summing stacks. Once again, going up to track and going down to create track stack, or we could use the key command shift command and D. So let's do that right now. I'm going to select all these drum tracks by clicking on the first track header, holding shift and clicking the last then holding shift and command while pressing D. All right, so let's now select our summing stack option and click create. Once again, we get a main track with this disclosure triangle that allows us to collapse and expand our track stack, both in the tracks area, as well as the mixer. However, with folder stacks, the output routing of our individual subtracks never changed. Really, the only thing that changed was we got this extra fader on a separate channel strip that allowed us to adjust the levels of all the tracks within the group. But with summing stacks, the output routing of the subtracks actually changes. Remember in video number 32, when we explored sends, buses, and auxes, where we could essentially route a copy of our audio from the send field through a bus to a separate auxiliary channel strip? Well, as it turns out, you can route the output of the individual channel strips in the Logic Pro Mixer through buses as well. And when we create a summing stack, Logic Pro identifies the next available bus and routes the output for each subtrack to that bus, which turns out to be the input for the summing stack. If you remember our analogy from video number 32, imagine your audio is like water that's just passing through individual pipes. 
But when our audio flow gets to the output, instead of going straight to the stereo output, it gets passed along through bus two to the main channel strip of our summing stack. So check it out. Not only can we adjust the level of our group of tracks as well as solo and mute, but we can also process this group as a single instrument. You can load a patch and channel strip setting directly to a summing stack. So if we go down to drums and percussion and maybe select stereo kit, maybe natural kit, we now have loaded an instance of the compressor as well as the enveloper and channel EQ to process this entire drum kit. Plus, we also get smart controls with summing stacks. So now we can process the entire kit as a whole from a single interface. This is quite different from folder stacks, where if I create a folder stack from these three tracks and use Shift, Command, and H, we don't have the option for smart controls for the entire stack. And we also can't load audio effects, channel strip settings, or patches to the folder stack. But not only that, we can also route our summing stack as a whole to separate send effects. So I'll select the next available bus. This is bus three. And maybe I'll apply an instance of Space Designer. And if we dial up, that send level to aux three. If you're working with a track stack made up of only audio tracks, in this case, let's create some new audio tracks. I'm going to set the audio input to that of input two on my interface. I'm gonna load maybe four tracks and also set the inputs to an ascending order if we click create. So we have four new audio tracks, each set up with a separate input. If I select these four audio tracks and then use shift, command, and G to route all four of these tracks into their own summing stack. If I now click on the record enable button in the summing stack main track, this turns on record enable for all subtracks within the stack. So now I could start recording directly to these audio tracks. Just as a quick example, I don't have anything connected to start recording, but there you have it. Additionally, if we're working with a summing stack made up of multiple software instruments, so perhaps we'll select by holding command and clicking, all these software instrument tracks, and I'm just gonna drag them out of sub two and delete it. That was our folder stack. If I now create a summing stack made up of maybe this Mellotron flute, as well as the synth track using Alchemy, Shift, Command, and G to create a summing stack, we can now perform both these software instruments from a single controller. as well as record directly to the main track of our summing stack. But even cooler about software instrument summing stacks is that each individual software instrument can have its own MIDI events that it performs by itself without the other instruments.
We move this down. Or perform both instruments simultaneously from the main track. Lastly, since Logic Pro 10.7.5, you can also nest track stacks within track stacks. So we'll do that right now. We'll select maybe the snare top and snare bottom, and then use Shift, Command, and G to introduce another summing stack within our summing track stack here. So I'll name this maybe snare combined. And if we collapse it, now we have a combined snare track of both the top and bottom microphones. If I select the overheads, and the hi-hats, we can use Shift, Command, and H to create a folder stack within our summing track stack. So now we have a single fader to adjust the level of both the hi-hat and the overheads, and it works in the opposite direction too. So if we select both Mellotrons and use Shift, Command, and H, we have a combined folder stack. If I select this first Mellotron and use Shift, Command, and G, we now have a summing stack inside the folder stack. So you can nest one extra level of a track stack within a track stack since 10.7.5. So I hope you can see the versatility of track stacks for your projects, whether it's just to organize multiple tracks together in a group so you can have an easier time navigating your projects or for the opportunities that they bring for multi-track recording and processing. Thanks so much and I'll see you for more tomorrow in our Newbie to Ninja series. Take care.